What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, May 11th, 2018. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the Rogue One, Gary Witta. I'm here. I'm back. You're back, finally. I can't remember the last time I was actually in on a Wednesday. I've been getting we, shuttled around I like a lot to move lately. You haven't this. responded. What's your deal next week? Can you do two? Can you do Thursday and Friday? Those are the to, ones I needed. I have to get back to you on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll do at least one, whether or not I can do both. I'm okay. very much in demand, Greg. I know you are. You're a very popular Everybody character. wants a piece of this. It's true. It's true. Who wouldn't? Look at you. You know what I mean? And bring oh, come on. It is, it's pretty special. Look at this. They're, they're right there. This is it, too. You haven't been by since you did this. Oh, that's you, right. You so, you know, board. if I had come in on Wednesday, that actually would have been launch day. Yeah. Would have Wednesday. That would also it would have worked out too well, day. though. You know what I mean? Because yeah. Andrea, she, you know, she needed Wednesday. This right. Week. You know what right, I mean? Right. Throw her a bone once in a while. So, yeah. Um, Star Wars The Last Jedi, official um, movie adaptation from Marvel Comics, written by myself. Yeah. Uh, with art by uh, Mike Spicer and Michael Walsh, two very, very talented um, uh, artists. Book looks great. Very proud of it. A lot of stuff that was not in the movie is in here. So if you want some little extra scenes, perspective, a little bit of uh, almost like a director's cut of the movie as a comic book. And you're telling it more, you were telling me from Luke's perspective, right? Like we're Yeah, yeah. More trying that. to find ways into scenes that, uh, you know, you, you can't just like redo the exact scene that you saw in the movie. You can like, why bother? You saw that yeah. already. Um, so like one thing we tried to do is, if you remember from the point of view of the of the film, you're kind mm. of with Ray. Yeah. And she's walking up on Luke and Luke turns around and it's always from Ray's point of view and Luke's kind of the mysterious character. From the comic book point of view, Luke you're with you're kind of with Luke and you're inside his head and Ray is this who's this girl who's come to bother me in my solitude here on this island. And so yeah. you get to kind of see the same scene again, but from someone else's perspective. That's awesome. It's fun. It's been really, really fun to work on. This is the first one. It's out uh, now. Uh, we're doing six of them. And at the end, it'll all be collected into like a trade paperback of course, graphic novel kind of deal. Okay. So that's my plug. Well, here, sign it for me. Oh, this, is my, it? this is mine. Oh, this I is bought yours? this with my money, you know. This I went down yours? there and bought it. I, I gave you credit yesterday that you came on. Yeah, I, I, I walked you through the whole show on Wednesday. Yesterday, I was telling people on this show that on Wednesday, you came by. I thought you were coming by to give us copies. No, you just wanted a LaCroix. I just wanted to steal some of your LaCroix. You were downstairs getting downstairs buying your own copies. I was downstairs in the comic store getting my own copy because it's, you know... I do this every time something of mine comes out. It's fun. It's a little thrill to go to oh the God, store, I can only imagine, actually yeah. see it on the shelf, buy it, and yay! You know something actually got made. In this did you business. stand around for a while though, doing the whole thing? Like, what are you picking up? Oh, what do you get? What are you guys getting? Oh, no, you seen no, the Star no. Wars I did. Thing? I, 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 I did ask. Though. I did ask the uh, the the clerk behind the counter to take a picture of me. You know, kind of mugging with the with the. Did with you the, tell uh, him you wrote it, or just, hey, can you take a photo they of me? With I, this they, they knew that I wrote it. Yeah. All right, cool. It wasn't like you know. It doesn't like. Not like everyone in the comic store goes, you know, it's not that big a deal. But, yeah. you know, it was nice. It's fun. That's what I, everyone I does might, that when you walk in here. This the, 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 the this weekend as I as I go out and about, I might check in on a couple of other comic stores. It's just fun to kind of see it out there. Okay. I always like, you know, kind of the Marvel thing. You know how they just use the surnames. Yeah. It's kind of fun to like, yeah. you know, you always see that, and it's always fun to kind of be now in the pantheon of Marvel comic book Look writers. You. It's kind of kind of kind you of. You know cool. what I mean. Everybody said when you, you when you left the game's reporting side of the they thing, said they, he's, he's, that was he's a stupid up. move. Where's this yep. guy going? Where's, he's an where's idiot. Where's he going to go now? Exactly. I'm Look at go, you. You're go, laughing go, all the way to the bank on these idiots. The, well, hardly. Well, you're laughing. In comics, you're laughing. Hardly. You're laughing. Yeah, I'm still laughing. You if you didn't laugh. know, ladies and gentlemen, this is Kind of Funny Games Daily each and every week on a variety of plat. No, every day I'm hungover. And every day... We run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, you need to be part of the show. You go to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Give me your questions, comments, bad PSN names, and everything else under the video game sun. Then watch us record the show live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. Or you can watch it later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. Or listen on podcast services around the globe. If you're one of our very special live viewers, remember you have a special job. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us everything we screw up as we screw it up in the show. Just the facts. Not flubbed lines and stuff. But when we screw up a date or something, let us know so we can correct it at the end for everybody listening and watching later. Are you uh, hungover? I'm feeling good now, but I'm still, yeah. But you were out last I'm night? I'm out of the box, yeah. Where'd you go? What'd you do? You know the Academy of Science over in uh, Golden Gate Park. Of course, I know it well. Uh, they had their gala last night, their Big Bang Gala. Oh, and very so fancy. we we went to the after party there, and uh -huh. like we walked in there. It had, it had to be fancy dress. It was, you get invited to all the hoi polloi events. Don't I you? do. Yeah, it's all because my wife. You're a local media celebrity. Well, no, it kind of. Well, yeah. If you if you work it all the way back, at one point, my wife was on the beach and found a sea lion without a head. Oh God. And this led to a, a Twitter exchange with a few m m marine people. Which then got the Academy of Sciences, or they, they're like, we took the head. 
And then I think that I chimed in, and then I think they saw that. Oh, we and that were, you, that's how you became connected up with these guys. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, it's it, Twitter connects me to everybody. You know what I mean? I know, but what is, that, that's a that's a particularly. I mean, you know, all kinds of fun connections get made on Twitter, but that's sure. like a, that's a particularly odd one. Yeah, a seal mm-hmm. a seal line without a head. Yeah, that's how it happened. And we we're like, oh, we love the place. Like, oh, you should come for a tour. And like, oh yeah, and we haven't done it yet because we're busy. But we do. They do the Thursday drinking there all the time. Oh. But then this is the one that was like the the big one. Yeah, open bar and was all like that stuff. T Pain was there. Yeah, yeah, it was a fundraiser. Nice. Yeah. I'm sorry. Kevin Quella from kindoffunny.com. You're in the bullpen. What do you got? Did you find out why it lost its head? Yeah. So when it turns out when a sea lion, I guess, or maybe, and I'll, I'm just going to keep it to sea lions. It could be other things. When they are on the shore, right, and they're dead, and they've, they clearly something happened, it gets reported or whatever, and then, yeah, they come take the head to then put it in the collection to figure out why it died of natural, what caused its just death and all head? stuff. Yeah. Why not the whole body? Why did they leave the rest? Well, they leave it there, and then they go back into nature, I think, and become back part of the I whole circle I feel like push it, in the wa- push it in the water. That's probably heavy. Think of all, all the hermit crabs oh. you got there. You know what I mean? God, that's graphic. If you want to know more about the headless sea lion, hit up my wife, at Gangster on Twitter. She'll tell you the entire story. <laughs> Housekeeping for you today. It is what's good's one and one year anniversary. Uh, head over to their stream. They're streaming all day. Uh, you can also get, check out everything on demand. But congratulations, of course, to Andrea Steimer, Britt, formerly Alexa, but it will still congratulate her because it's been the year. Uh, what's good games? One year anniversary. Good for them. Uh, Gary's got a new comic book out. It's right here. He just signed this one, so I will be putting this a kid now, through this college. Is now worth a lot of money. I'm going to put a kid through college with that. Uh, and then today, I'm going to tell you, we're brought to you by Patreon.com/slash Kind of Funny Games. But I'll tell you about that later. For now. Let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news. Four items on the Roper Report. A banker's dozen. Kevin, it looked like that caught you off guard, but were you just playing with me? No, no, it definitely caught me off okay. guard. I was. I uh, love it when, when when he pops up in the little green screen corner. Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Well. Look at him because it really because the too. perspective in the side really does look like he's just sitting down there. Yeah. Like in a mosh pit or something. Sure, yeah. I like it. And yeah. the green and the uh, chroma key is very well done. You got he, it Kevin's, in he's a pro over there. Yeah. You know what I mean. And Good the thing stuff. is, he can get crazy with it. Have you ever seen him get crazy? He can shrink himself down. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. I won't do that. Uh, number one, it's a big one. Everybody's uh, up in a tizzy about it. Let's talk about it. PlayStation's E3 showcase has been announced. It's Monday, as you'd usually expect. Monday, June 11th at 6 p.m. However, Sean Layden's out in front of the messaging here, talking about how it's different. We're going to read from his uh, post over on the PlayStation blog first. In a rare break from tradition, we wanted to give you an early glimpse at what to expect heading into the showcase on June 11th. PlayStation's Worldwide Studios will be at E3 in full force to provide you with an exclusive look at four upcoming titles. Death Stranding from Kojima Productions, Ghost of Tsushima from Sucker Punch, Marvel's Spider-Man from Insomniac Games, and The Last of Us Part 2 from Naughty Dog. Of course... We'll have, stellar, we'll have stellar announcements from third-party publishers and independent developers who are all busy devising innovative new experiences that will make your heart race and your emotions soar, whether you're playing on the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Pro, or PSVR. There's that. Then he popped up on the PlayStation blog cast with one Sid Schumann, Ryan Clements, friends of the show. Uh, there, he had this quote. At this year's E3 event, both the media... At this year's E3 event, both the media event and what we do in the convention center, we're going to we're going to be focusing on all of our great content that's coming out. There will be no new hardware announcement at E3 this year. You heard it here first. There will be no new hardware announcement at E3 this year. This has led the internet to be ablaze. Ablaze, Gary. We'll start with why, Sean. Why, why is that? What well, is what's the what's the what, what's got everyone up in arms? The idea here for well, first off, they, they, the idea that they're saying we're going to do it different this year. We're going to okay. do something different, and we're going to tell you ahead of time. Hey, we're focusing on these four games. Okay, we're focusing on Death Stranding, Spider Man, Ghost of Tsushima, Blast of Us Part Two. Got it. That. They're being very clear, I think, and direct, and hey, this is what we're going to talk about. And usually, because usually you don't know what. Usually, you don't know about. what anybody's going to talk about. That part, that's strange, isn't it? Because part of the fun is the mystery. You don't know what you're going to get. Right. And so people, and the fact they're mm. throwing around showcase, people are starting to attach that back to the PSX showcase, which wasn't your traditional PSX press conference, right? Where it was uh, a whole bunch of boring stuff in the beginning, and then I came out, and it was great for an hour. Right. You know what I mean? Like people really loved that part of it, that second half. But the, in general, they were like, "Oh, this isn't the press conference we're used to." So so people are concerned that I think this isn't going to be the press conference, which isn't my concern. What I what I what I take away from this right is that they are very much setting it. Hey, here's what's going on. We're telling you up front. We're going to focus on these four 
Worldwide studio, first party games. Right. Even though they say all that, and they obviously, obviously, he says to me, we're, of course, we'll have stellar announcements from third party publishers and independent developers. Yeah. So you still expect everything. I think it's going to be a very normal E3, with the exception that you probably lead with last. They like to punch you in the face. Either lead with Last of Us or Death Stranding. And it's a meaty portion. Those sirens are on our end, by the way. It's either a meaty portion of, hey, here we go. We're talking about. It. I don't think it's gonna be a talky talk thing where it's like, "Hey, we're having a keynote. Hey, I'm Sean Layden. I'm gonna sit down and interview Kojima. And we're gonna talk about the game." I'm not worried about that. I saw people jumping to that conclusion, thinking it'd be like that PSX kind of thing. Okay. I think it's going to be big trailer, come out, talk about it. I think it's probably a good thing in the way of. I think you'll get more, maybe not a full on release date, but you're. I think for Ghost and for Death Stranding, you're gonna walk away with like, here's what. I mean, probably for Last of Us, I wouldn't be surprised if all of these came out with like a more. Hardcore, this is coming next year, this is coming in the fall, this is coming, whatever. They actually explain what's going on. I think people are freaking out. I, I like the idea that they're trying to lower expectations. However, even that said, or set expectations, maybe not even lower them. Okay, yeah, so manage they're, expectations. They're managing expectations. I still expect all this to happen and then them still to have one more thing that is a first party or yeah, is an exclusive or whatever. Yeah, you've got to have one thing. I mean, I, I, I don't love this, to be honest. Part of what I like about... You know, the Nintendo Directs and the E3 press conferences and the Apple conferences and things. every time they do that is is the mystery, is the secrecy, the speculation, the build up. What's it going to yeah. be? Maybe there's a clue here. I love it, you know, when like Tim goes nutty and starts doing his like Twitter detective work and putting yeah, together yeah, yeah, all the little yeah. clues. And so to say, look, this is what you're going to get. We're just going to show you. I don't know. I don't want to know what's in my Christmas presents before I open them. The thing about it, though, is that I don't think it takes away from any of that, right? They're talking about like PlayStation's Worldwide Studios will be with exclusive look at four upcoming titles, right? What title were we expecting? And I know, I know there's notable exceptions here, which we'll get to in questions. But what first party were we expecting to come out and have something brand new, a new game to show? I wasn't. I, You know what I mean? Like, I don't... You figure we have... Insomniac, we have well, who isn't even you know, first party, but is working on exclusives here, I guess. But you have uh, Sucker Punch. You have Naughty Dog. Polyphony is going to obviously be working on another Gran Turismo. Sony Bend is doing uh, 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 Days Gone. Media Molecule we know is working on Dreams. I just don't. I don't. It. I don't. People are reading too much into it. I feel, and I know Sean's like we're doing it different this year. I don't think they they're throwing the baby out of the bathwater. They still talk about third party publishers and independent developers. They're still going to come out and be like, hey, guess what? Here's the newest game from from, from software. You know, like right. that, that. That this doesn't disqualify that. Whereas people were getting thinking they were but i want to bring in some readers michael wrote in to kind of funny.com slash kfgd just like you can and says you have talked about and speculated the announcement of the playstation 5 before on kind of funny games daily this playstation e3 showcase will be for focusing on four major titles and announcing third party and indie games so i wanted to know if you think this is signaling the end of the playstation 4 or that sony has been revealing too many games at once slash saving announcements for psx so this is the other thread on the quilt here, right? Everybody's now also saying this is takes down the hype of it, right? Because Sony got ahead of itself, announced all these games. Don't what's don't, going on? It's man? Kevin. It's Kevin being Kevin. He's he he tries to make it's distracting. He's uploading stuff and then he's he, he, but he trying to be around. professionals here. It's well, no, we threw that out a long time ago. Ah, uh, there it is again. Oh my god! The VLC screwed him over. It, what's going on? It shouldn't pop there. I'm sorry. I don't know why <laughs> Well, I think it pops because it's VLC and you're opening the VLC thing, right? Every morning before I start the show, I open up VLC. I put three screens up, right? Yeah. And the last one I leave on the screen where it's supposed to pop and I exit it there. So wherever it last opened, that's where it's supposed to open. Sometimes it's just like, fuck you, you know, and just. But it seems like over. it's always like, fuck you during the show. It's not always. I, I want to say it happens one every four times. Once every four days. I've never seen that. Did, didn't we just have this conversation yesterday or two days ago? Maybe. Okay. Do you? Well, it was different. No, that was different. That was. Oh, there's different things. It wrong. randomly went to the next video. Okay. On behind you. Okay. So you would get what you, you pay prefer for, the morning show? Would you prefer the morning show goes out at one? I have, the morning show I, sucks. I don't care. I'm just asking. Like, no, no I don't serious care. Question. It's fine. No, I, I, I no, question. it doesn't stop me at all. It's just when I'm working with rookies stop here. Stop Gary. On camera rookie stop people. Stop Gary. You know what I mean? Confuses yeah. Jared. Yeah. It does, well, yeah, I should be the professional one, no matter what's going on back here. Yeah, you just keep rolling. Like, you could be having like hardcore porn playing back here, and I should just be like <laughs> completely focused. Exactly. 
The other argument people have been making right about this is the fact that there's they believe that Sony announced too many of its exclusives too early. So now they can't surprise you with a first party reveal. Right. That we already know. And I, again, I'm, I'm using first party. So you don't think they have Studio. something up their sleeve? I, I mean, I do, but I don't think from first party from Worldwide Studio. And I don't know if they need to. I don't. All, all the big guns from first party studios have either just put out a game right. or are about to put out a game. Right. And I don't think that them focusing on this means that you don't get a one more thing that is a uh, Horizon 2 tease, which I don't think you're getting. But I'm saying something from another first party got studio. It, got it. I don't think it's something that it, it couldn't be a God of War DLC or two tease, which you're not getting. But this is what I'm saying is these studios have just performed. They've just nailed. They've just executed. I hear you. So... I don't think you have to worry on that level. You can still have exclusives. You can still have third-party announcements. You can still have your normal E3 press conference. Yeah. It's just the fact that they're calling this the showcase and getting out in front of it that's weird. Right. It's weird to see that, you know, as he says, in a rare break from tradition, we wanted to give you an early glimpse at what to expect heading into the showcase. It's just different, and nobody really knows how to deal with that. And I right. feel like that's the big thing getting your kick I around. Yeah. To Michael's question, you know, what I mean, like, is this the end of? Is it, do you think this is signaling the end of the PlayStation Four, or that Sony has been revealing too many games? I don't think it's that they're revealing too many games. I think that this was the right move, as you've seen with the sales of the PlayStation Four, as you've seen with hype, as you've seen with basically public opinion. That man, they're firing on all cylinders. They have so many amazing things going on. This is great, and you can see the timeline. I think if anything, this is just going to solidify the timeline and maybe make it crisp, more more clear. Uh, PlayStation's been real good about not putting dates on anything until they're really ready to put a date on it. Uh, Spider Man, Detroit, everything else. Uh, God of War. So I don't think Death Stranding and Ghost and Last of Us are going to get hard dates, but I wouldn't be surprised if they start throwing around 2019, 2020, something like that. Okay. And I think that yes, that that is where it gets interesting, Michael. Where. That is, I think, yeah, maybe signaling the uh, where where they expect the PlayStation 4 to pass the baton or the PlayStation 5 to appear. Because, yeah, once you clear the chamber of these games, you have to Im- wonder, well, is the next God of War going to be a PlayStation 4 game or is it going to be a PlayStation 5 game? Probably a PlayStation 5 game. Maybe one of those dual things. We'll see how backwards compatibility works. You know, for Horizon, is the next Horizon going to be a PlayStation 4 game or a PlayStation yeah, 5 game? Yeah, it's a good question when these big titles come and they're right at the kind of Terminator of... One generation. Yeah. I'm, I'm, we don't know where the Terminator is right now. Yeah. Um, but, you know, yeah, is it a lot of games end up either being, a lot of big games end up being like the last hurrah of a generation yeah. or like a big part of the launch window for the next one? Yeah. And that'll be the big question of how they do all this and where it all goes. And I mean, that was always the joke about Death Stranding when it got announced. Was that actually going to be a PlayStation 4 game or is it going to be a PlayStation 5 game? Right. You know, and like they've said PlayStation 4 and they stress PlayStation 4. Uh, Sean had a similar question, right? He said, Sony just announced their E3 media showcase and I'm excited to hear your take on the new format and the changing landscape of E3 and game announcements. The past few years, Sony hasn't been shy about showing off their upcoming pipeline of first party titles. Now they're refocusing on their currently announced first party content, which will likely all be released by late 2019 or early 2020. My question is, is this a sign that Sony's starting to hold things back and build momentum for a 2019-2020 PS5 announcement and release? Or is this just part of the ebb and flow of announcing release date and console cycles? I think it's the ebb and flow. And I don't think they're, again, holding anything back. I think they were really aggressive when they came out and, anna- and showed The Last of Us Part Two early and showed Death Stranding so early. I think that was them being very committed to this is the roadmap for PlayStation 4 without ever having to cheesily say this is the roadmap and put out a graphic right, for it. Right. So I don't I I'm interested to see what Monday night looks like, but I really don't think it's going to be that different from what we've seen. Yeah. I I I guess it won't I, if anything I guess it won't be the full tilt. They start and it's just trailer 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 talk talk, you know, it'll be big old trailer come out, have a few like rehearse parts, maybe do a live gameplay demo. Or maybe that'd be awesome. I'd be totally down to get a live gameplay demo of Death Stranding, Spider Man, Ghost, and Last of Us. If it was all here's the trailer, here comes Nate Fox to tell you about Ghost of Tsushima. Then he picks up the controller, he plays for 10 minutes or whatever it is. Then we stop, we bring out a third party, they do this thing, they do that. I don't, I don't know what it's going to look like. That's what's exciting about E3. That still is the excitement of cool, what is this new 
thing that they're messaging differently going to look like. But I guess, I, I guess you know, it can't be super exciting because, again, these are all games that have been announced previously. They've, they've already all had, like, their first announcement. Yeah. So there's nothing here that's, like, debuting for the first time. I'm just saying I miss... I was just talking to Tim um, uh, back there about... Tim Hype Geddes. About how I like the... Um, I used to like going to E3 and watching the conferences and not knowing yeah. what we were going to get. And some of the great moments in E3 history have been those moments where, you know, the lights go down, yep. and here's the next thing, and the lights go down, sure. and everyone's like, oh, what's it going to be? And the trailer starts, and the trailer is cut to achieve this effect, right? Like, oh, yeah. the, the first moment where everything, something's a bit mysterious, you don't, know, you don't quite know, just a bit of mise-en-scene, you don't quite, quite know what it is, and then you hear a voice or a character or something that goes, oh, shit, it's this thing. Yeah. You, know, you, know, it's, 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 you know, it's the sequel to this or that, and you oh, go, yeah. oh, my God. Like, and that's the first that you, you realize that something is, is happening. Yeah. I'll tell you a story, and this is going to age me a little bit. Lay it on me. When I went to the cinema, uh, years and years ago, it would have been around 1990, 89, 90, went to see, oh my God. Ghostbusters was, 2. No, it was Highlander 2. My oh, God. Okay. Um, <laughs> but so this is pre-internet. This yeah. is before, you know, tra trailers and YouTube and the, you know, the gossip wheel. Before there were cell phone it, photos of them shooting the trailer outside exactly. in the streets of And it was before... You knew, it, it, it was a it was a happier time in many ways because I like to be surprised. Time. Certainly a simpler time. Um, I like I like surprises. Yeah, who doesn't? I like That's not, why E3 is great. Like, I like not 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 unpleasant ones, but I like nice surprises. And I remember sitting in the in the theater, and this trailer started up, and it was um, uh, just like a factory, like a machine, like a machine factory, and like pistons and things yeah. and steam. And something was getting built. And I'm like, okay, what's this? What is this? What could this trailer be? And then you heard, boom, 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 boom. Yes. And you saw the Terminator head for the first time. <laughs> and I just absolutely just like flipped out in the theater because I didn't know because there was no internet, because there was no like gossip thing. Yeah. Maybe if I'd read Starlog or something, I would have known about this, but I didn't. <laughs> it was the first time that I knew that there was a new Terminator yeah, coming. Yeah, yeah. And if, so you can go on YouTube and find it. Like the original, original trailer didn't show any just footage the from teaser. the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just the machine factory. And then at the end, you saw a fully assembled, you know, T-800 yeah. or 101, whatever they no, call it. No, you're right, it. T-800, you're right. And, I was very happy. You know. And, uh, you know, the lights turn red. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it's Arnold steps out. Oh. And you go, oh, my God. So, like, they, made, they made Terminator 2? Yeah. And I just flipped out because that was how I found out. Sure. And that, I think, is the way to find things oh, out. Oh, dude, totally. Not not read it in, like, a you know a tweet or something. No, and that's the, yeah, that's the, you know, I always go back to, for me, in terms of a movie uh, context, Cloverfield, the original Cloverfield, mm -hmm. where they didn't put Nobody that online that beforehand was. and that's they didn't right. put it online after. And I remember, right. I'll never forget, Damon and I went to see whatever we were going to see the movie. Yeah. And he's like, I'm going to go to the bathroom one last time. And he left after as that trailer started. Oh, no. And he came back and he sat down and he was like, what was that all about? And I was like, that was an amazing, it might be Godzilla. I, and he's a huge Godzilla fan. I'm like, it might be Godzilla. I don't know. And I'll, I, it, 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 it was just like, you couldn't put into words because like, what the fuck am I watching? And like E3, that's the best. I think that I think that art has been a little bit lost. The art of the teaser trailer. The actual, the part of the tease in yeah. the teaser trailer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't show me like, the whole movie. We're not going to show you the whole movie. I mean, but these days trailers do do that. But like yeah. the first one, even the teasers now, show you a big chunk. Yeah. And I like the ones that just show you just enough to go, yeah, this is coming. We're going to show you a teeny tiny bit. Yeah. But, you know, you're going to have to wait and just kind of get the get the, the, the salivary glands going. Yeah. I get, so, I mean, that's my, I get, I, I understand that it's we, uh, weird. I, I, I just don't, what, I can't speak today. But it's because I'm I I just I'm just not on the same page I think as a lot of our listeners people who wrote in to kind of funny yeah this is what ran away with KFGD today I have questions about this okay where I just don't think it's going to be this giant shift from what you've seen it's and I think no, it obviously doesn't sound like it. we could have predicted all four of these games getting a lot of time at E3 that wouldn't have been a surprise and so I don't think you lose that it's just yeah I guess. I don't think the room, the cra the pop in the room is going to be any smaller now when the, uh, Sean's like, we have something else to show you, and it goes black, and Naughty Dog's logo comes up. Right, right. We know right. it's going to be yeah, last of us part still, two. We're going to sort of freak you out. Know that even though you know what it is, you know you're going to see stuff that you haven't yeah. seen. This will be something new. Exactly. And I still think with third-party publishers and independent developers, you're going to get a ton of stuff we didn't see coming. It's going to still be E3, and it's all the predictions I've been making out my ass right about what Capcom's going to do or who's going to show up this and where's Rocksteady. I still think all that happens. I still think you, you know, when we're talking about is uh, Borderlands 3 going to be there? That could still easily be on this stage. Right, right, right. Do it. I don't think you lose right. it. However, 
Brandon does write in with a different take on this question. Uh, he wrote in, of course, to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Today on the blogcast, Ryan Clements and Sid Schumann interview Sean Layden about PlayStation's 2018 E3 showcase. Days Gone was conspicuously not mentioned. Do you think the game is in trouble or is Sony just saving it until PSX where we can get more gameplay and a release date? Love watching the daily shows. Gary, keep giving Greg shit and drinking Tim's LaCroix on your off days. I do enjoy coming in and stealing your LaCroix. Uh, yeah, I think I feel Nick, like I'm doing you a favor. You've Nick still begs got so you to take much it. Of yeah, it. Nick begs like, you to I, take I it. came up just to get a can of it. Yeah. And they said, oh my God, take a case. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, we like taking care of you. Um, no, I, this is another thing I saw people reading into, and I think it actually makes more sense now why uh, Sony went with Game Informer for this you know, month of coverage right now that's coming up with Days right, Gone. Because right. they, uh, they just put up an hour of the game. We have a question about that later in KFGD. An hour of the game on Game Informer, the first hour of the game to show it. It was a, oh man, they're doing it, and Tim and I talked about it this week, of they're promoting it so hard, does that mean it could actually come out way quicker? And that oh, the see. next day that got squashed where they reconfirmed it's coming in the early part of 2019. Okay, or, yeah, 2019. Early part of 2019, which was where it had been pegged for a long time. But it also makes sense now. Of like, cool, they're not getting one of the main spots on the E3 stage. And that makes sense, too, because now it can be in the pre-show for uh, uh, the thing when they do the broadcast. You know, this starts at 6, so at 5, you figure they're going to go live and do the same thing where they announce smaller games and talk about PlayLink and do all these different things. Yeah. You can put Days Gone in there and preface everything with, well, you know, there was just a whole month of coverage over on Game Informer, but still, here's... Eric from Sony Bend, he's going to tell us about this and talk a little bit about it for a while before you get it off and go. And I'm right, sure right, right. I haven't started. I have no insider knowledge. I haven't started booking appointments for for Sony because they haven't reached out for E3. But I imagine there's still going to be days gone uh, behind closed doors at the very least, probably hands on something like that. And this is just you're letting it get all the attention it needs right now before E3 comes around. E3 comes around, you focus on these four games that are huge and are going to lead you in for the next 18 months probably. I hear you. And then, yeah, move on to the next thing. And then Days Gone gets to kick back up as it gets out there. And PSX, yeah, Days Gone will have a huge experience at if they stick to that okay. first part of the year. All and good. PSX comes back. So there you go. Yeah. Everybody calm down, basically. I'm still excited. It's a press conference. Yeah. It's a showcase. <laughs> Number two. Minecraft crossplay has finally been detailed for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, this comes from the Xbox Newswire. We're happy to announce that the Bedrock version of Minecraft will launch June 21st for the Nintendo Switch system, both digitally on the Nintendo eShop and as a physical release at retail. As with our recent Better Together update for Xbox One, players who already own Minecraft Nintendo Switch Edition will be able to digitally upgrade to Minecraft for free. Minecraft will be the first game on Nintendo Switch to fully, or I'm sorry, to feature cross-play support across Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, Windows 10 PCs, Android devices, iOS phones and tablets, and VR platforms will all be able to play together for the first time ever. As is the case with every with Minecraft, uh, as is the case with Minecraft on any Bedrock platform, Minecraft on Nintendo Switch will also support achievements in gamer score, reflecting players' activities and experiences within the game and allowing them to compare stats with friends. Minecraft also lets players on the Nintendo Switch system access the Minecraft marketplace for the first time, allowing them to explore a constantly growing community marketplace. They can purchase unique maps, skins, and texture packs from f favorite creators within the massive Minecraft community. Players will be able to make purchases safely and securely with mine coins and all purchases can be enjoyed across every platform on which the minecraft marketplace is available i like it could easily fit into new dates but it's just still so crazy i wish more games did this i wish more games were cross platform i wish that like whether you bought um call of duty on playstation or xbox yeah it's the same game yeah you should all be able to play together sure just because, like, let's, you, I mean, look, you, you're a PlayStation guy. I'm a little bit more of an Xbox guy. Sure. You're probably going to buy the PlayStation version of something. I'm going to buy the Xbox Division. version. Division. So, Don't look, so when the time me, comes, Don't do this to me, Play it on when the time comes, you and I Don't are going to have to reach some kind of compromise. Someone's going to have to come over to the other side. And honestly, I feel like I'm going to end up in the one caving because you are, I know you're so, do it, sir. so PlayStation. I already got my Platinum in Division 1. I got to get my Platinum so, in Division 2. So, but I, I, I played um, PlayStation. I, I played Division 1 on Xbox. So like, if we want, the point is we shouldn't have to do that. Yeah. Like sell the games, sell the games on the different platforms. Sure. 
But then let people play together. They're not, you know, the, the core engine. It's not that different. No. Let people Especially play Especially as together. everything just becomes uh, less but, powerful you know, the PCs. Corporate, you know, the corporate powers that be would never allow it. But well, sure. You want people to buy. You don't need people to buy things, right? You want them to be I might be. Those. I might be more likely to buy either version if I knew there was a wider player base of people to play with. Sure. And not just people on that platform. You're not wrong. I, what What's exciting for... For me, right, is and I think it's, they nail it here is Minecraft on any bedrock platform. I love that games are becoming platforms, right? right? Where Fortnite is a platform where I can play it on PlayStation, pick it up on my phone, and it's the same thing. Yeah, and you can play through, and you purchase it all there, and da 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 da. da. That is the future. Like I don't, I, I don't know how everybody will crack it, and how PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo will all play together, but. There's go, there's no way to stop that for these kind of games, right. you know. What I mean, I don't know if it, it trickles down all the way to a Call of Duty. Yeah, we're all going to be able to play that, or a you know, but like a division in online game, a Destiny in online game. Like, I feel like that's the future of just letting people play however they want to and where they want to. And then if PlayStation, you know, continues to stomp their feet and say no, where does that leave them in the next generation? Yeah. The next thing when Xbox comes out and has all this stuff behind yeah, them and has you. all this goodwill, but still so crazy that. You're gonna play on the, your Nintendo Switch and get Xbox ach achievements, and then today, like you know, I, I we got this isn't the, the I got a press release from Nintendo about it, and then I saw it again on the Xbox Newswire or the Xbox blog or whatever, and it was what I thought it was better written there, so I copied it over here and like to see Phil Spencer and Reggie talking in the same piece, like the same you know boring pull quotes or whatever for this stuff, but it's just like what a weird place to be, you know. That's awesome and it's rad, and you know we just did a games cast uh, yesterday, another E three prediction episode because everybody loves them so much, and you had some more predictions. The idea that we are to a point where, yeah, like this year is like Miyamoto going to be come out on the Xbox stage. Is Phil Spencer going to be part of the Nintendo d Direct? Like, is there a chance they're going to put like some crazy character from Xbox into Smash Brothers? Like. These are all things that could technically happen, right? And I, like my, one of the things that when we were riffing on this idea, I was like, Minecraft, there could be a Minecraft level in uh, uh, or a stadium or uh, battleground, whatever you want to call it, in Smash. You know what I mean? You yeah. have Phil Spencer come out and announce that when they're talking about it. And it's like, that'd be awesome and weird, but awesome and just... Yeah, it's cool. It's Again, the more up. integration, the more, you know, we like shared universes and when characters cross over and from one thing into another, it's great. Yeah. Gary. Yeah. I got an interesting one for you here. Okay. Number three. GameStop's CEO has stepped down. This is via Brendan Sinclair over at GamesIndustry.biz. Michael K. Mahler's tenure as GameStop CEO was a brief one. Mahler took over the position in February, and the company today announced his resignation, a little over three months later, saying only that it was for personal reasons and effective immediately. The Dallas Morning News reports that the company confirmed Mahler's departure, quote, is not due to any disagreement with the company regarding its financial reporting, policies, or practices, or any potential fraud, and added he isn't entitled to any severance. Mahler had, had been a 16-year veteran with GameStop before his appointment as CEO and was promoted from the position of Executive Vice President and President of Internal Biz uh, International Business. He took over from GameStop's interim CEO and Executive Chairman uh, guy over here, who had previously completed his sentence as company CEO, but took the reins again as interim basis last year when his initial successor, the CEO role, uh, J. Paul Reigns, left for medical reasons. Reigns has since passed away. Uh, it's... Just a, it's. I feel like it's like we're driving and there's been a fender bender. And you just look over like, I wonder what the story was there. Because we talked about it here uh, uh, when Reigns passed away and then obviously when Mahler stepped in as CEO and right. got the job. And it was one of those things of like, I remember at the time being like, oh, GameStop, put him in there. I, want, I like having that part of the conversation and know what's happening on the side of the business. Not that we would ever have like in-depth discussion about, well, let's talk about this Mahler fella. But the fact that since February, it's May. He's gone. When when ten years are short, you always wonder what happened. But at the end of the day, I don't care who the CEO of GameStop is. What do I care? How does sure. that affect my daily life? Maybe he was the guy who's going to you know demand that everything be cross platform. Maybe he was going to be your guy. Yeah, he was going to be the guy. We'll only sell guy. games in our moribund brick and mortar stores <laughs> if uh, if you make them cross platform. Just who cares? Some of the interesting things. the last time you were in a GameStop? Uh, when I bought so the Mario release when I bought Jen her Switch. Okay, yeah, our local one uh, across the way they just closed down. Really? Yeah, it's gone. It's huh. an empty. It's an em empty lot now. The one in the the mall at Lake at Lakeshore Plaza. Huh. It's gone. Oh wow. Okay. But oh no, Hawaiian barbecue is still there, and that's oh. all I care about. I didn't know you're. Oh, they love Hawaiian. I barbecue love over there. a little Hawaiian barbecue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Hawaiians are very, very um, smart when it comes to cuisine. Who'd have thought that some barbecued meats, rice, and macaroni salad would all go so well together? It does, but they though. do. It's you ever, ever had a loco moco? No. 
I went to Hawaii on vacation and I had this thing called a loco moco, which is a breakfast dish. Okay. It's rice. Yeah. With a hamburger patty. Yeah. Uh, fried egg. Okay. And they and they put like Hawaiian gravy on it, and it's uh, oh my god, it's so good. Yeah, loco See, moco. This that's remind- my tip if any next time you go to Hawaii. Did you ever eat at a Jolly Bee? Yeah, I like Jolly Bee. That's that's uh, Filipino, isn't it? Yeah, but it's similar. And it's a similar thing: spam and rice, yeah. and it's a similar. Kind well, I remember of cuisine. if you remember, and this is me dating myself, not to yeah. give away my age, but with GDC always at the Moscone Center. There used to be a Jolly Bee across the right way across there. the yeah. street, and, I, and that was the only Jolly Bee I had ever seen. There's one at Tanforan if you really if you really need some Jolly. Bee. Oh, I never went into it. It was it was way too crazy looking for me. I was like yeah. hamburger patty on rice. No, thank you. Yeah, I'll go eat it. Witchcraft. No, I like it. I like Jolly Bee, and I like Hawaiian uh, Hawaiian barbecue. Okay, well, that was your Hawaiian minute. Good luck, GameStop, getting a new CEO. <laughs> Number four, Nolan North is getting a special BAFTA. Friend of the show, Nolan North, getting a special BAFTA. Uh, Los Angeles and... Lo- oh, that, that's the top of the thing. Uh, the British Academy of Film and Television Arts, BAFTA, is to honor Nolan North with a special award at an event at the London West Hollywood on Monday, 11 June. The event which takes place on the eve of E3 Games Conference in Los Angeles, is part of BAFTA's ever-increasing global games activity. The award will be presented to Nolan North in recognition for his outstanding contribution to performance in games. Previous game professionals to receive a BAFTA special award include Brandon Beck and Mark Merrill on behalf of Riot Games, uh, Brenda Romero, Amy Hennig, and Marcus Presson. Good for uh, Nolan. Go, go get him, Nolan. Good very job ta- on Very you. talented. Obviously has left a big uh, 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 footprint in video games. You yeah. always recognize his voice when you hear it. Sometimes you don't. When I was playing Destiny 2, uh, no. I thought the ghost, for some reason I thought that was Alan Tudyk, but it's not. It's Nolan oh. North. Yeah, no, it's Nolan. Yeah, very, yeah. very good. Very talented guy. Nice guy. And good you bring up him. a good thing there. That, uh, I feel like Nolan's such a great everyman, obviously, right? Because I feel like you'll, he'll, you'll play games and be like, oh, it's just, that's, Dr- that's just Drake. It's just yeah. Nolan being Nolan. Yeah. It's because people want that from him. That's how they direct him to be. I always come up with The Last of Us. He's right. uh, Peter. No, David. Da- he's David. Peter David's a comic book writer. Uh, David in The Last of Us, right? And it was like, it wasn't until he, I'm such a weirdo, but it was something like he chuckled or gasped. And I was like, is that Nolan? And I like, right. I think I t- texted him like, is that you? Or he told me ahead of time and ruined it because he does that a lot too. Also, shout out to Troy Baker, who had his baby. Well, I, Pam, his wife, had the baby. Oh, well, Troy's congr- a dad now is what I should say. I haven't said that on the show yet. And shout out to Troy and Nolan, who just launched their uh, new video game YouTube stuff. Retro Replay, I think that's All right, called. all right. That just launched. But you can go to their Twitters and find it there. Uh, I, I'd love to go to that Twitter right now and find it for you, Gary, but it's just so far away. <laughs> if is, I wanted something closer, away. like say the video games that came to the mom and grab shops today, where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. Kevin, will you go to Troy Baker's Twitter and bring up the thing and so I can sure. actually say it correctly? Uh, out today. Grim Legends 3, The Dark City on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, and Hyper Sentinel on the Nintendo Switch. New dates for you. Roof Rage comes out of early, or into early access June 8th. Uh, Death's Gambit comes to PlayStation 4 August 14th. Walden comes to PlayStation 4 May 15th. N++ comes to Switch on May 24th. And Inside Xbox Episode 3 drops May 17th. Yes, I was right. Retro Re- Replay. Nailed it. Yeah, Retro Replay. You can follow that one. We're scrolling around here. Ah! Retro replay, retro replay show on that there Twitter if you want to go do that, and I'm sure, yeah, that retro replay on YouTube, they're all over the place. I tell you, it's fun. Two of my friends, two friends of the show, start a YouTube channel. I didn't know about this. And sounds they don't like, come sounds to, like they, a sounds like a fun show. Yeah, it sounds like a great show that you think if I'm gonna launch a YouTube show, I'd go to my other friend with a YouTube channel and cross promote. But man, they did not do that, did they? Would not give us the time of day. Just kidding. I booked <laughs> Nolan North. You'll hear about it later. Ah, uh, time for reader mail. But first, I'm gonna tell you. It's brought to you by patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Remember, party mode is up right now in early access for just a buck. You can head over there and see Andy get so mad he almost walks off set. Uh, there's, you, you can get early access to us recording the games cast. You can, if you give him more than a few bucks today, you get the games cast early. See all the stuff I've been talking about there. There's a whole bunch of good stuff there. And of course, most importantly, it keeps us all employed. The lights on, the mics on. So if you like kind of funny games daily, head on over to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Also head to your local comic book shop and buy Star Wars Last Jedi. Episode uh, issue one, issue one, issue one, issue number one. Yours won't be signed by Gary. Are you no. coming to prom? What was your decision on that? I'm still. 
What if Still I processing. what if I tell people to bring their comic to and you can sign it there, huh? Well, that's just more work for me. Yeah, what, I know. What do I get out yeah, of that. Yeah, I, I, it's nice. For oh yeah, people. it's gonna suck to have people coming up with the, the creation you created <laughs> that you willed into existence and asking to sign it. We'll we'll continue to talk about it. Why you gotta come? Just come. Bring when, the whole fam. When, when Bring is it again? June thirtieth. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll just leave, leave it with me. Whole, Le- leave it with me. It's Tim's birthday. Do you know? You want to break his heart on his birthday? Is it his birthday? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Let's get in the questions here. Uh, Adam says, hey guys, I have a question slash request about Kind of Funny's E3 coverage. I love to watch you guys talk over and react to the conferences, but due to time differences and my job, I usually don't get to watch them until you guys upload them to YouTube. With this in mind, is there any chance you guys can avoid putting any big surprises slash reveals in the titles and thumbnails? I know this seems like spoiler culture gone too far, but it really is great to experience those hypiest of hype moments the way they were meant to be experienced. Watching Tim lose his shit. I know there's probably some amount of YouTube algorithm shenanigans that makes it important for you guys to put the big things in the title, which is totally fair enough, but I figure I'd ask anyway. We talked about this just the other day, how we don't like um, spoilers in our YouTube titles and in our animated thumbnails. Yep. Uh, And so... Yeah, I'll, I'll, let me get to it. So, great question, Adam, and I, it makes it to the show because, yeah, I remember the last, I think it was the the last time Tim flipped out about something, which was the last Nintendo Direct, I forget what it was. This popped up, I saw on the subreddit, somebody was like, man, I wanted to see, I was excited to watch this, but the he, the th- thumbnail, Smash Super Smash Bros, that was it. The he, headliner thumbnail gave it away that it was going to be Smash Bros or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I feel you. It was a clip out. I feel you on it, and I understand what you're saying, Adam. But yeah, to your point, no, we have to be for SEO, for YouTube algorithm, for people to watch the video. It needs to have the sexy headline of what is most exciting thing about it. And so, like, I I imagine I I, th- I feel like our E3 stuff's generally good, where it's like talking over the Nintendo conference, or you know. But I'm sure we must have put Metroid Prime Four or something in the title that uh, time happens. I understand what you're feeling, Adam, but I also feel there's no way around it. Now, and not just for us, but the fact that everybody else on YouTube's doing it, everybody on Twitter is going to be doing it. Like, I found it interesting that that was a discussion when Smash happened. What you're talking about, and I totally feel as well, is cool, God of War is dropping, and you want to watch our God of War spoiler-free discussion, you go to watch that, and then all the headlines over here, all the related Once videos... Once you click on one, the algorithm serves up all this other stuff where yeah. they don't care about. Like I said, that's why I'm with the God of War. Yeah. I, I watched a couple of God of War Primer videos to get up to date on the story. Yeah. And the next thing I know, because YouTube is so aggressive with the recommendations, yeah. that all of my YouTube recommendations were thumbnails of like God of War Final Boss. And it was there, right there, animating in the thumbnail. Yeah. I don't want to see that I shit. I hear you. I hear you. And so like Kevin's brought it up on my screen over here. So yeah. Is, this, was, is this Tim reacting it to It was the uh, breakout. Smash? Yeah. So it was Smash Bros. Switch. I loved watching this. This is one of my favorite moments is Tim losing I don't, shit. I don't think this is the breakout. I think... Is this not the like? Uh, oh, you're right. It's 39 Gamescast. minutes. This is the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. So for that, for the Nintendo du- Direct live reactions, yeah, we call this Smash Brothers Switch. If you look over then on the playlist of everything else, it is kind of funny. Talks over Nintendo E3 presentation 20 blah, 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 and like those are generic. So you should be fine. We don't even put like crazy things in the thumbnails. We just have a generic. You should thumbnail. be fine with our E3 coverage, but I can't promise you that. Yeah. And I do feel, for me personally, and it's got to be a personal decision for everybody. It's just not the same as what we're talking about with spoiling a game, right? right like, I right. feel like it's news, and even though we're doing it in our goofy kind of funny way, we're delivering the news, and so your headline has to relate to the news, your thumbnail has to relate. All this is just window dressing to get people to come in and actually look at the content. Yeah, I hear you. So, so yeah, it's a sticky situation, but no, we will not be worrying about that in terms of spoiling stuff, because I feel like by the time you get to someone walking or talking over everything... You should have either been watching it live or seen it. I know it's not possible for you, but I feel like you open your Twitter, you're going to see the fact that. Get get around it. Mm, okay. Let's see what's going on. Uh, Goncarlo. No, there's no R. Goncarlo. Writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Is it a good idea to show gameplay of a game in such a rough state of development? Days Gone just had the first hour shown at Game Informer and is going to have an extra 45 minutes. For me, the game looks quite promising. However, it was rough and had plenty of frame rate drops. I didn't expect it to be all smooth because the game is still in pre-beta and it will still have one year until launch. Not as, not, and that's not 100% correct, but close. Uh, but do you think... Sony should have waited until the game was in a better state of development to show the first hour to avoid bad impressions. Uh, a lot of complaints I see are stuff that should be fixed or improved by release. No. I think it's the same thing. We've not been talking about Days of Gone. Lots of people have been 
forgetting about it when they talk about what's coming up for E3. Yeah. And so for Game Informer to get out and drop a whole bunch of information and get people excited for it and Sony to show it, as we were saying in a different uh, topic of conversation, I guess, it's just it's time to shine right now. Then let E3 blow up a whole bunch of other games. And then as you know, we get to the holiday season, start worrying about going into 20. 20- 19 right. with it yeah i don't think you have to worry about it doing damage to it i don't think i think people who are watching right now are getting a better feel for what days gone is and i don't think they're gonna hold it against it when it comes time right gary right greg thanks bud hmm. Hmm. what else you got i gotta go uh, we uh, we gotta go a bunch of meaty ones so i'm just gonna knock these two out and then we'll be done okay Awesome, Nick writes in and says, Hey, Greg and Gary, <laughs> remember last year when I wrote in about Destiny 2 on PC coming out nearly two months later on consoles? Well, that was worth the wait, but here I am now, still waiting for Monster Hunter World to come to PC. Nearly four months have gone by since its release on console, and there still hasn't been a peep about the PC release date since they initially said it would be autumn 2018. I still refuse to double dip, but I'm beginning to lose hope. Do you think our release date might be confirmed at E3 in the coming weeks? Thanks for the awesome show. Awesome, Nick. Well, who knows? But I would, I would certainly say this. Yes, PC on multi-platform games. PC um, gamers often do get last dibs. Yeah. If you want it, you want to really suffer. Try being a, a, a rock star fan on PC. My <laughs> God, they they really do make you wait. Yeah. Um, I don't think you'll get it at E3. There, I don't think because obviously there's there's the PC conference. Right there's the pre PC PC press conference thing they do on Monday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, kind of funny. I com slash wrong. I'm pretty sure it's Monday. Uh and I, but I don't see Capcom wanting to share the stage for this. They've been so successful with Monster Hunter World that I feel like if I'm then, if I'm them, what I would do is be working on the next giant expansion or whatever that's got coming to consoles and be like, cool, here's the big announcement that the expansion drops this date and that's also the date that it'll come on PC and have your own moment outside of E3 and continue to revel in all the money you have from Monster Hunter World. Yeah, yeah. Tim writes in. Not our Tim, a different Tim. And this is more just a PSA. What's good? Kind of funny. PlayStation now gets a lot of crap, and just a week ago, I had no faith in the service either. However, finishing God of War had me intrigued to go back and play the original trilogy. I missed out on the PlayStation 3 era and didn't play them originally on PlayStation 2. I can now say, after using the crap out of PlayStation Now for the seven-day free trial and beating God of War HD, God of War 2, and the original Infamous, that the service has turned a corner and games now feel like they are being run natively. I have the lowest speed of Comcast internet and things just worked without a hiccup over 35 hours of gameplay. Worked without a hiccup over 35 hours of gameplay. My question is, what does Sony need to do to change the public perception of PlayStation Now? Also, what price point do you think Sony could offer the service at to maintain profitability? Is a $10 a month is $10 a month a realistic expectation to have? They no longer have the $100 a year pricing. I would have signed up for that in a heartbeat. Thanks for all you do over there. Kind of funny. Tim. Forgot Tim's name. I've never tried PlayStation now. Me neither. Well, no, I actually you're, no, you're like a PlayStation guy. Wait, hold on. No, I, that's a lie. I tried it when it first launched and it was garbage. And so that was okay. the thing. It's like well, maybe if, it sounds like the time uh, to revisit might be here. It has, but I you know, like this is the problem of uh, Tim's question. What does Sony need to do to change the public perception of PlayStation now? I don't I don't think enough of the public cares. I don't know if I don't I I don't have facts figures or anything to back that up, but I just don't think I think Xbox gets to say, "Oh man, everything's backwards compatible, right?" Yeah. And that's awesome, cool, and that's a big deal to some people. And I think I guess PlayStation Now would be a big deal to some people, but I just we're, we're such an industry focused on the next thing, the next big thing. That are we? Is anybody sitting around being focused on PlayStation Now? Are, are people? that gung-ho about backwards compatibility like do you ever think about going back and trying these things not really yeah right and i don't and i understand that yeah we're lucky to have the next big game to play or something like that but that's how most of us are and i feel like you're a different use case as well right where you you're writing and then you have a family and then you're playing games like you have even more passions and i guess business things that don't drive you to like you know like our job is to play games in some respect like you don't necessarily have that you you know you get to go home and have your career and have your family and have your leisure time and how you balance that are you ever sitting there like i guess the closest thing would have been red dead where i was like maybe i should boot up red dead again i was like i did eh. the, four, the 4k uh, red dead uh, remaster did pique my interest yeah um but aside from that no i i can't remember the last time i played like an older 
um, uh, generation game. And I guess even even if there's a, a large subset that backwards compatibility in PlayStation Now means a lot to, and it's something they use every day. Like you know, you know, Tim, you've been going crazy for seven days. I think the real thing of how does Sony change the public perception of PlayStation Now is Sony has to change the entire messaging they use about PlayStation Now. They need to be excited about PlayStation Now. PlayStation needs to tell you that PlayStation Now is awesome and different and crazy and give it a huge segment at E3. Give it a huge segment at PSX. Yeah, they go to promote it. Go spend some bucks. Bang the drum on it to make me think that it it is... Make me, as somebody who's in the industry and uh, talks about stuff, make me think they care about it. I don't think they care about PlayStation Now. Right. I think PlayStation Now exists and it's probably making them money and they add titles to it and I see it come through on the blog every so often about it. But just who's the advocate for this? Who, who are the people who are, who are playing these things and talking about it? You're doing it right now, Tim, which is why I love it. Thank you for writing it. Other people, of course, kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Write in next week. Uh, uh, Tim and uh, Jared on the first day, uh, they'll go through and see it. If you're using backwards compatibility like crazy, if PlayStation Now is getting used a lot, if you really, really care. But as somebody who exists on the internet and talks a lot about PlayStation, the fact that Number one, I don't hear about it ever. Number two, I when I talk shit about it like this, this casual shit talking of like, does PlayStation care? Do you care? The fact that I on the, on the internet, I could tweet right now, does anybody like donuts? And I'm going to have a million responses of people being, I love donuts. Fuck you for not liking donuts. Blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm talking about, about video games, the thing people like to argue about the most on the internet. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, PlayStation now exists, <laughs> I guess. I don't know if anybody's using it. I'd yeah. like to know, but yeah, I think 10 bucks, uh, you're, and this is a good point too. You say, is $10 a month a realistic expectation to have? They no longer have the $100 pricing, right? Like, I think it has to be. If they, it would, if for PlayStation now to be a runaway success, PlayStation would have to care about it. They would have to promote it and they'd have to take a loss on it. They'd have to get out there and do the movie pass thing of like, hey, we've come out. Like, even if it was E3, Sean Lane is just like, hey, we're doing a bunch of different things. We're not doing any hardware, as you know, this year, but let's talk about services. PlayStation now has come a long way from when we launched with the, you know, the original service and when we got Gaikai and did all these different things. This is where it's at now. We're offering a free month for PlayStation Plus people right now. We want you to get in there and try it. We want you to understand why this is great. Because that's the whole thing. Is yeah, just E3 like, is the perfect showcase for it. You know, give give people some free, uh, you know, some uh, some free incentive to go in there and give it a try. Yeah, it's not, not rocket science, is it? Yeah, but you just don't hear about it. Even even, even PlayStation View like doesn't get talked about no. that often. You know what no. I mean? Where it's like, and I know Tim used it for a while and liked it a lot, but. It's just all these things that PlayStation does and then much like the Vita or the Move, right? Like doesn't really support it that much after yeah, that. Yeah, it's yeah. out there if you want it, cool. And when they're selling consoles as fast as they can make them and you know have all these awesome exclusives and that's what everybody really, really, really cares about, I don't see what they can do. If you want to change the public perception of it, you have to change the internal perception first. Right. Time to squad up. This is where one of you writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Give me your name, username, platform of choice, and why you need friends in video games. I read all that here. The best friends come and find you. You all play games together, and everybody has a good time. Today, Anthro Metal needs help. In the game, E3. What does that mean? Let's read a statement. Hiya, Greg and Gary. Not sure if this counts as a squad up, but I will be attending E3 this year for the first time and have never really been in or around LA, except Long Beach. You're if not there, missing much, my friend. Thank you. If there are any local best friends or best friends coming to E3, I'd be happy to meet up. You can find me on Twitter at Anthrometal. That sounds, it's spelled like it sounds. And pretty much everywhere else with the same name. Face down, ass up. That's the way we like to get that chicken. I like that. All right. I like that. Uh, so Short and to the point. Tweet, tweet, tweet up. Get out there. I've seen stuff on the subreddit, too, of people trying to meet up at E3 and on prom and all that jazz. I'm sure it's happening on Facebook. A uh, million places to do that. But yeah. Go see each other. A lot of people are, of course, asking if we're doing any meetups at E3. No. E3, of course, nonstop work for us, which is good. We like that. But there's always a million things. But if we're... Well, it's open to the public, so you can, might be able to wander around with me. Or if we were streaming somewhere, maybe you could come watch us do that again. But I have nothing to announce on that front. Maybe I will one day. Gary? Yes. We ask people watching us live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later what do we on got? looks like a short list no it's not bad at all today uh, again Luke R. Wolf trying to correct the fact that I screwed up my own, I flubbed up my own text in the beginning I'm not gonna that doesn't count um no yeah kebabs is in the same mindset as me he was just a little bit behind me Yoder says compromise. Play the Division Two on PC. Get, get out of here. Get, lo- get lost. <laughs> yeah, that's me? even worse for what you. What are you talking about? Uh, oh, okay. Th- this is the indie boy, of course. Mark, 
our good friend in the UK, one of our biggest supporters, Kevin, don't kill him. He t says, this isn't, I don't think uh, you're wrong. He's just talking, which I don't mind because it's Mark. I'll let him go. Mark Freeman, what up? While I watch live, even if it means being up at 6 a.m., the easiest way to avoid spoilers in titles is to watch the Twitch archives and get to see the chat lose their shit. That's a good compromise. That's a great compromise if you don't want if you want to wake up and not have everything ruined and do that way. Yeah. And then confirmation from from Kebabs. The PC Gaming Show Conference is indeed Monday the 12th. It'll start at 10 a.m. for those on the west coast of the United States. And that's it. We didn't really get anything this wrong. This is a pretty uh, a, a short, compact, error-free show. Perfect Buttoned for up. a Friday. You know what I mean? Everybody Buttoned wants up. to get into the weekend. Yeah. I like it. I like you. I like you. Thanks, Gary. Figure out if you can be here next week, all right? Get in, uh, yes. Look at your schedule. Thursday be, and Friday. I, look, Those I always, days I'm worried I, about. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay, good. Uh, next week, I am at Judges Week, seeing all sorts of E3 games I won't be able to tell you about for quite a while, probably. Uh, Monday show will be Tim and Jared, so give them a warm welcome. Remember, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily each and every week, Dan, a variety of platforms we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, you can watch us record it live at twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. Watch it later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames or listen on podcast services around the globe, no matter where you get the show. Thank you so much for your support. Please consider going to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. Kick us a buck. It means the world to us, and you get to see Andy get mad. Also, you can go to your comic shop, kick well, Marvel a buck, right? You don't get no royalties on this. No. Yeah, you're just paying. No. No. Kick Mar go, go support Gary Witta. You know what I mean? Think of it this way. A piece of Gary Witta is just around the corner from you now. Don't you want to get it? That's right. Never been closer. Never been closer. Will he be at Kind of Funny Prom? Maybe. I'm going to keep you guessing on that one. Yeah, I know you will. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, it's been our pleasure to serve you.